Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another update on MarkTwainZephyr.com. Also, our Facebook and our Twitter pages, at MarkTwainZephyr. I'm Robert Tabor, Director of Passenger Development for the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad, and thanks so much for joining us for another update. It is Sunday afternoon, June 20th, 2021. I'm going to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And, uh, yeah, well, we're going to start out here. We're just hanging out underneath the Tom Sawyer. We realized, well, this is... Well, heck, one area of the train that we haven't shown you over the last uh, year or so. We've been doing our updates, and uh, a lot of the uh, beautiful uh, interior work has been uh, finished. So we thought we'd show you some of the uh, gritty underneath uh, the train portions. And uh, hanging out with me on the other side of the little whatever this is, uh, is My Bob. Cage. Your My cage. cage. This is where we keep Bob when he's not uh, being interviewed <laughs> during our videos. So right. let me flip the camera around and uh, maybe you can show us uh, what uh, some of the underneath parts of the Tom Sawyer and, and what, what well, work you need the to do. right there. There's a, those are, are the condensing units, the other half of the air conditioner that we've put up top. Those get mounted underneath here. There's, there's one for each unit that's up top. Here in the Tom Sawyer, there's two units inside the car, so we got to mount two of those down here. Where I'm sitting is where the old air conditioning units used to be. I've removed all of those, and uh, we're in the process of getting things set up to install those underneath here. There'll be one long ways this way here, and one like that over there. It's, it's not an ideal situation seeing the ones that were in here were built and designed you know specifically for this space we're ju we're just taking something that's existing and and making it work for our our situation so it's always you know little a little bit of difficulty involved but as always at Wisconsin Great Northern we make it work i'm just in the process of cutting out some beams in here so we can get them up as tall as possible so we got our clearance above the rails uh, it's a lot of dirty work, you know, there's dirt and buildup under here from 1938 because it's never been cleaned. Uh, just uh, from carpentry to dirty work. Uh, <laughs> whatever it takes to get the project done. Hopefully by the end of next week, I should have all of the underneath units installed. And then uh, it'll get time for, for those to get hooked up because with the weather that it is now, uh, you gotta, I gotta finish some bathrooms and do interior work yet. But even if it's 80, de 80 degrees outside and sunny, it's it's 110 uh, on the inside, and it just you know it's not even safe to be in there sometimes on them hot days, especially if you're working by a window. You know that sun really magnifies through those windows. So we're gonna try and get this all done and hooked up, and then venture back in and do some of the final detail work in the bathrooms and finish that stuff off that's the plan anyways so what is some of the stuff under here that the what you have your hand on that's this, that's this our is, new that's electrical that, electrical yeah, that's the, yeah this is the high power line okay uh, uh, hpl that runs through comes in one end and it travels through each car we pulled it in somewhat temporarily during the winter so we could get each car fired up so we could have heat in them now as we're going, you know, we're redoing it a little bit and making it a little more permanent. This will all get fastened up and rerouted a little bit after this is all cleaned out in here. And we'll do that on each car, you know, as we work our way down. So what is that tank, the huge tank the, behind you? The, the, that's old, are, right? That's, the, uh, that, that's the old. <laughs> this is the old motor and that is the old pump for the old air conditioning unit. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So that would be original 1930s. Yep, that would be original. Hard, hard to believe how big that <laughs> stuff is. I mean, why would there be a, I guess, why would there be a motor underneath A motor here? to run the pump. And the pump is for... This is the pump that would have ran the, the Freon and everything through the units. Oh, okay. This is just a big electric motor that had, what, five belts on it that ran that pump. Okay. You know, nowadays the, a motor this size, you know, can be replaced probably with something about like that and about like that. Really? It, it just took a lot to run that giant pump there. And what would be this? I don't know. You call it a cage or a wire? Well, or this what? this here allowed this allows airflow into the to the units underneath here to cool them off. Oh, okay. Because as as the, the freon and stuff goes up through the A coils in the top. 
it, it gets it, it's heated and it's returned hot and then it cools that that the, the freon and everything or whatever they use now r22 i don't know what it is but it, it cools it off it blows a fan and those fins down here it blows air through that and it cools it off and then it pumps it back up you know and it makes that cycle there's a high and a low okay and then above above my head we have some old, really cool old uh there's airlines. a valve oh that's that's the airlines some old airlines so are you gonna have to put all the old airlines and everything I, back I, in I, no i believe they're just gonna run all new Okay. I, it's just everything has been sitting so long. Anything that's had moisture or any type of water in it, it, it the pipes are froze and split. And now that everything is so open through here, it's it's just easier to, to pull everything new. Safer, too. You ain't got to ever worry about having problems. You know, everything is new and up to date. And 20 years ago, this car was in Manuka, Illinois. It sat in uh, three or four feet of water. Is there any indication that that caused some additional damage? Really, or can can you did. tell that? Can you tell that this car was partially uh, underwater underneath here? Uh, you, you, you know that that does answer. Yeah, you can. And you know, yeah, I, I was it just a low spot that it was sitting no, in. No, there was most of the car was covered with several feet of water when it was sitting in. Uh, the Relco yards in Manuka. No, fact, I, I'm saying, was it just in a low spot in the yard, or did something flood? And I think it was a low spot where it was put. Yeah. Yeah, that that could have water could have got into something. Everything is stainless, so the body itself you can't tell. But some of these components that are seized up, it, it could have something to do with the rust. You know, everything down here that is steel for nuts and bolts and so on, it is pretty corroded. And if it was sitting in water, that would have something to do with it. You know, for now, that's about all we got going on under here. It's getting this done, and then uh, as soon as the steel gets here, I'll have some. I'll, uh, I'll make up some steel frames for underneath here to support everything. Uh, that shouldn't take that long because they're going to be pretty much the same all the way through. You know, just like doing the lumber and the, the woodwork on the inside. Once once I make that first one. You know, the, all the rest of them will be real easy. All right. Thanks, Bob, the man underneath the Tom Sawyer today. <laughs> we'll check back with him next week, see what you got going on. Rock and roll. Thanks. Speaking of underneath the train, we got the chance to watch Bob and Brian remove the old water tank from the Huckleberry Finn. Let's take a look. Definitely a lot of uh, hard work and interesting things going on underneath the train this week. A lot of hard work again by our crews up here at the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. And of course we want to mention we are, uh, yeah, just less than a month away now from our Mark Twain Zephyr road trip presentation and book signing tour. They'll hit over 10 stops in Illinois, Iowa, uh, and Missouri. In fact, a week from now we'll be in Canton, Missouri and Quincy, Illinois on the uh, 20th of July. Um, we have a full schedule of stops. So let's go ahead and roll through those stops uh, real quick as a reminder of where we'll be and we hope we'll see you uh, along the way.
So yeah, that is our uh, full roll of stops. Uh, if you would like to see where we are at, at each location, we are either usually uh, at a public library or a bookstore in each of those cities. Log on to MarkTwainZephyr.com and join us in one of those cities. I'll tell you the location, the address, and the time that we'll be there. So if one of those cities is uh, convenient to your path, uh, we hope to see you out there on uh, Wisconsin Great Northern, kind of hitting the road. And this was an idea from a lot of people in some of the original towns that the Mark Twain Zephyr rolled through uh, for us to come out and visit. And um, since we're not going to operate to the fall at the earliest here, well, yeah, we uh, decided to take them up on that and visit and tell you about the Mark Twain Zephyr. We'll even bring some pieces of the uh, original train for you to come out and see. So uh, no reason not to join us. And finally, got to say happy Father's Day as it is uh, Father's Day. Of course, to my father, who's uh, 85 years old, lives in the north suburbs of Chicago and was one of my inspirations for uh, liking trains and riding trains as a young boy. We did a lot of Amtrak trips together. So happy Father's Day to my father, Thomas, and of course to uh, father of the railroad, Greg, and all fathers out there. Happy Father's Day, and we'll see you next week, June 27th. Yet another update here on the Wisconsin Great Northern's Mark Twain Zephyr. Thanks so much for joining us for another update on the Mark Twain Zephyr at the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. Before you go, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's really easy. Depending on what browser you have, just click on the red subscribe button on the lower right hand side below the video screen. Or perhaps it might be in the upper right hand corner of your screen. This way, you won't miss any of our future updates. For restoration updates throughout the week, head over to MarkTwainZephyr.com and click on the Restoration Updates link. We usually add a few photos during the week. Our next video update will be next Sunday afternoon. And remember, you can stay in touch with us throughout the week 24-7 on social media. We mainly use Facebook, at MarkTwainZephyr. We also occasionally use Twitter at Mark Twain's Ever as well. Once again, thanks for following us and liking us and supporting the Mark Twain's Ever restoration effort at the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. We'll see you back next Sunday at this time. Fly away.